The key to my success in that, that moment where everything changed for me was stop trying to chase opportunities, stop trying to chase products, because I did it in network marketing. I bounced from company to company trying to find something that would make me successful. That you don't take uh, too big a risk. It is still a very risky industry. And so the way that I recommend if you want to get involved and buy Bitcoin or Ethereum or anything like that is to only invest the money that you would put on the card table in Vegas. So my advice for folks who are wanting to figure something out, it's what skill do you want to master first? Just get really good at one thing. And once you do, there's always going to be demand for that. Network. I feel the biggest pain when I see people who cannot find their place under the sun. Unmotivated, sad and desperate people. Business owners, entrepreneurs suffering from burnout, stress and boredom and no time for their family. My biggest goal is to help them realize that this world provides enough opportunities for everybody. I manage to help thousands of people, but I strongly believe that we can do so much more if we unite our knowledge and skills. And this is the reason I started doing interviews with the best visionaries and world changers. Their inspiring personal and success stories are a proof that everything is possible. All you have to do is listen and learn. Together, we can change our lives and the future of this world. Hello everybody, this is Warrior Family and I'm Smilian Mori. Welcome. I know that you are all here because you want to create and live the life worth living. But in order to create and live the life worth living, we must do something about it. And my purpose within this show is to introduce you to their guests, their habits, belief systems, hacks, so they can help you to become a better person and create the life we're living. And today I have a special guest. His name is Mike Dillard. He's an entrepreneur in Austin, Texas. He built his first million dollar business by the age of 27, teaching small business owners how to effectively market their products and services online using attraction marketing strategies. Combined, his businesses have produced more than 50 million in revenue without outside funding. In 2017, Mike developed the world's first fully automated hydroponic system for food production. Ever, ever grow. His primary company today is Self Made Men, which provides the knowledge and skills entrepreneurs need in order to achieve their goals in life and in business. Welcome, Mike, to my show. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to see you because I can see you only uh, on the Instagram mm -hmm. account or when you're surfing mm -hmm. uh, or doing another crazy things. <laughs> and I must say that I bought every program that you put out. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. So, uh, let, let's start with the let's start with the self-made man. Mm. You are self-made man, 27 years old, uh, earned first million in the online business. Yes. This was when? This was like 20 years ago, almost 15. Uh, 2007, 2008. Yeah. So about 10, 11 years ago, and that was after five or six years mm -hmm. of failure. <laughs> okay. So making no money uh, for many, many years in the network marketing industry, mm -hmm. and finally figured out how to build a business, and yeah. I learned the skills that I needed to learn. And very quickly, I went from waiting tables um, at a Chinese food restaurant to building my first seven-figure business. So did you, you started in MLM, in network mm -hmm. marketing business. Mm -hmm. And how, what is your experience with MLM business? Like, what did you learn in this industry that helped you become who you are today? 
I started in college, mm -hmm. very young, very probably young. 19, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I wanted to have my own business. I didn't want a boss. I mm -hmm. wanted to wake up when I wanted to wake up, and mm -hmm. I, I wanted to make as much money that you know as I could. And that was back in 1999, 2000. Yeah. Uh, no social media, no Instagram, no YouTube, Nothing. no MySpace, no Facebook. So we were using CDs and cassette tapes. Yeah, yeah. And, um, handing out. <laughs> yeah. And I'm very shy back then, very shy. <laughs> and I had a very hard time selling, a uh, very hard time talking to other people. And that was the biggest lesson that I learned was uh, that I needed to learn some new skills mm -hmm. that would allow me to build that business in a way that uh, was really more aligned with how I'm wired. I'm um, not a very social mm -hmm. person, so mm -hmm. going to hotel meetings or holding parties at my house was just not what I wanted to do. Okay. So I tried that for many years and mm -hmm. I failed at it uh, and I didn't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And then I ran into a gentleman named Dan Kennedy mm -hmm. and his okay. books. Yeah. Yeah. And he introduced me to direct response marketing. Mm -hmm. And the idea that I could write a sales letter or a sales script or an email mm -hmm. that would do all of the telling and the selling of my company's stories and products for me. And I started to teach myself how to make a website and how to use Google AdWords. And so I started placing you know, ads on Google, mm -hmm. sending people to a capture page to gather their email address. And after that, they would read a, a long letter that I wrote 20 pages long about the business. That changed everything for me because now I had people essentially coming to me, mm -hmm. asking me how to join and how to buy the products instead of me having to run after them. And that was what really changed everything. So the, the product was magnetic, sponsoring. It started, as, uh, it started as my company's opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a company called Zango way back mm -hmm. years ago, a juice mm -hmm. company. And and I wrote some sales scripts for the product and the business, and it started working really well. I built a, you know, team of a couple hundred people within a month or two, and then I wrote magnetic sponsoring as an instruction manual for mm -hmm. my team. Here's how to do what I'm doing. Um, and before I know it, I had people from all other companies wanting to buy the book and and use the same kind of strategy for their business. Uh, so I started selling it for forty dollars mm -hmm. uh, a piece on Google. And within, I'd say, three or four months, we were selling about 50000 a month of that book. And I was 26, How 27 years old. How much did you earn old. from this one little book? $25 million. $25 million. Yeah, yeah and the with other courses. One that, product, one well, the different courses that came after okay. that, that I wrote with it, yeah. Um, so that obviously changed my life in a very big way. And I became uh, the number one sales rep in my, or distributor in my next company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, I did that for three or four years and then retired at 30 from that industry. Yeah. I think that you didn't only change the, the, your life, you also mm -hmm. changed other people's lives. Yeah, very many. In, in, in a network marketing yeah. industry because I think yeah. you were the first one mm -hmm. to use this online recruiting yeah. uh, tool system. Yeah. So then you retired at 30. From, from network marketing. For, yeah. Yeah. And I what, had reached all my next? goals. What was next? Um, next was... I wanted to do something completely different. Mm. I wanted to learn new skills. I'd been doing that for almost 10 years since college. And I wanted to push myself in a new way and grow. Mm -hmm. So I'm very passionate about clean food. Mm -hmm. And here in the United States, most of our food's covered in pesticides, genetically modified, mm -hmm. it's not very healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you can afford organic food, which is very expensive. And I wanted to change that. I wanted to have clean food for everybody. So uh, I decided to try to invent essentially a way to let everybody grow all of their organic food in their house. So if you get rid of the farm and the tractor and the distribution houses and the highways and the 18 wheelers and the grocery stores, now your organic food, instead of costing $3, it costs 30 cents because you got rid of all that infrastructure in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. And everything starts and ends in your house. And 
there's many ways you can grow food at home right now, but it's all manual. You have to mm -hmm. check the pH levels and the chemistry. You have to mm -hmm. constantly change the water and feed everything and mess with the lights. And it's a lot of work, and uh, most people would not not do that successfully. So we wanted to make something that was automated and like a computer, and it would run everything for you. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you a picture of it, actually. Mm -hmm. um, we essentially built a system called Evergrow yeah. that you have in your living room, and mm -hmm. it grows everything for you automatically. It has Wi-Fi in it and an app, and you just drop in the seeds, and it does everything else. And this is in my living room. That's the prototype. Wow. Amazing. So that'll grow about $4,000 a year of organic food for $400. A year? Mm -hmm. Are you selling already? Uh, or big, just, yeah, interesting story. Experimenting. I, uh, I had to pull the, pull the plug on it. Right. And very expensive. How much money did you invest? Uh, a several, lot. a couple million dollars. Yeah. And after two and a half years of building that, we got that prototype. And I asked, how much is this more is it going to take to finish it and get into production? I'm like, oh, another two years, another couple million dollars. And at that time, another competing company came out with a very similar system. Mm -hmm. Not as pretty, but same functionality for less money. Mm -hmm. And they're, they've been around seven, eight years. They have $30 million in funding, big team. And they can sell their product for a third the price that we could. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was a big decision for me. I either have to go raise money from family and friends, and if I do that, I'm raising money essentially for product that is second best now, mm -hmm. which it didn't feel good about doing that. Mm -hmm. So I ended up stopping this and I invested in them. Wow. So I called up the, the company owner and told them what I was doing and, and they had a round open in the A round and so I said, I want to invest in you guys. So that was... Uh, Probably about a year and a half, two years ago. This is this is something that not many people mm. would do. It was advice from a mentor, um, and I'm trying to go through my options. Mm -hmm. And he said, "There's always a way to turn a, a, you know a failure basically into a win. So how can you do that?" Oh. And most people, I think, would just keep going because they've no, put that, so much yeah, in already. Ego, ego. Yeah, yeah. So. I took his advice and they're doing very well and hopefully in a couple of years they'll have an exit to a big company and get bought and I'll make back the money that I, I put into Evergrowth. In. Yeah. This is amazing. Mm. I think big lesson learned. A big 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 <laughs> lesson, yeah. So what, what did what did you learn from this? What lesson? Uh, it's a what very you change. It's a very big leap to go from what you're good at and where all of your value is, which for me was in internet marketing and mm -hmm. network marketing, to in a new industry that I knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about growing food. I went on Amazon and bought some e-books. Mm -hmm. Didn't know anything about manufacturing or industrial design. And um, I didn't have any contacts in either of those industries. So I paid what I call a, is a very high stupid tax. <laughs> I paid a very big price for what I didn't know and mm -hmm. my lack of experience in that in that world. And for me, it was too big of a leap into mm -hmm. a different way. Okay. I didn't have any of my existing assets that I could have used to apply that in mm -hmm. until it was ready to sell. Once it was ready to sell, I could sell it because I have mm -hmm. an audience. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the, the big lesson that I learned. Mm -hmm. um, innovate, do something a little bit different, push yourself but don't leave everything behind and go move to the other side of the planet, right? And, mm -hmm. and you don't speak the language, you don't know anybody, and try to do that again. Mm -hmm. uh, go halfway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was the big lesson. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great lesson for somebody that is thinking about starting some new business venture, maybe in other industry that he is not familiar with. Right. Yeah. What, are the, what advice would you give to somebody that wants to start a business? I get all these messages on Instagram. I want to start a business. I don't have money. How can I get money? No. The key to my success in that, that moment mm -hmm. where everything changed for me was stop trying to 
chase opportunities, stop trying to chase products, because I did it in network marketing. I bounced from company to company, trying to find something that would make me successful. Product, different. Uh, yes, product. it's not about the product. Only. No, no. So, and every and what I learned is, everywhere I go, there's people are successful. They're mm -hmm. on stage getting awards everywhere I go, but I'm not. No matter where I go, right? Wow. <laughs> So what's the difference? And I realized the difference is that everybody who was on stage having success had mastered a skill set. Mm -hmm. They were masters of selling on the phone or they were masters of selling from stage or mm -hmm. um, you know, holding, holding events. But they were phenomenally good at what they were doing. And I was not good at anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was the big epiphany for me is that I need to go master a skill set and I need to become a professional at it and one of the best in the world at it. And so that was the big shift for me. Uh, a mentor of mine said, you know, Mike, your goal is to make $50,000 a month. Mm -hmm. The reason you're not doing that is because you have not essentially acquired the skill set and you have not become a person who is capable of achieving that result. And so he basically said, if you want that result, you have to go change who you are mm -hmm. and become someone who's capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. That's when I found copywriting and direct response. And I spent the next year, year and a half, writing out sales letters by hand at night and studying copywriting and really figuring out how to sell through the written word. And I became one of the best you know, out yeah, there in that yes, skill. Absolutely. And, and now I had a, an ability. I had a way to successfully put out my message and get a result mm -hmm. for the very first time. And and that's what changed everything. So my advice for mm -hmm. folks who are wanting to figure something out, it's what skill do you want to master first? Mm -hmm. Just get really good at one thing. Mm -hmm. And once you do, there's always going to be demand for that. Whether it's using ads on Google or YouTube or Facebook um, or graphic design, whatever it may be, if you get really good at something, you'll be able to at least get clients that will hire you for that. And if you uh, pick the right skill set, you can apply that in a really big way and start a really big business so you mentioned uh, the word mentor mm. who was your first mentor and what advice did you get besides of this that um, Todd Falcone Todd Falcone Mark Weezer uh, Todd I know is big in the MLM space mm -hmm. uh, those were two guys in Zango that really spent a lot of time with me on the phone and mm -hmm. and helped me try to figure things out um, yeah I think network marketing is the perfect vehicle that mm. you can get mentored mm -hmm. for free. Mm -hmm. For free. Mm -hmm. There is nobody out there that will give you so much knowledge no. that somebody that is your mentor or sponsor or mm -hmm. whatever you call him. Yeah, I, I think of it as the best school for sales and entrepreneurship that you can go through because there's the no best other... school for entrepreneurship. I like. Well, there's no other industry that will mm -hmm. act as a mirror and show you what you need to work on better than network marketing. Mm. It'll show you what you're weak at very mm -hmm. quickly. And at that point, you have a choice. You either realize that and you put in the work and mm -hmm. address it, or you quit. Mm -hmm. And the people who make it are the ones who decide not to quit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And you learn different skills mm. from selling, talking with people, yep. negotiating. Yeah, you know, speaking on stage, everything, mm -hmm. and For once free. you, yeah, yeah, and you even get paid, right? Yeah, great. What advice would you give somebody that is considering network marketing as the first step in his entrepreneurship journey? There are many misconceptions out there about yeah. network marketing. It's a pyramid, whatever. Uh, I, I say that what I realized is network marketing is an industry of marketing and promotion, mm -hmm. often pursued by people who have no idea how to market or promote. So that's your business. That's what you do in that world is you market and promote. But most people come to the table with none of those skill sets and they have these expectations of making a lot of money and becoming financially free because that tends to be what gets sold in that world many times. You know, make a list of your friends and family and a year from now you'll make six figures, right? Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to become a professional if you want to get paid like a professional in that world. And so I think that was, is what I would share with people who are getting started to put their expectations in check. 
which is you're going to have to earn the money that you make. Mm -hmm. It's not going to come because of the business or the product. You're going to have to get the skill set mm -hmm. and become a professional at it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And learn the skills. Yeah. Let's talk about for a while about the second maybe business venture that I know mm. that I bought <laughs> the mm. products, uh, the financial education company. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the? Um, uh, Ele Elevation Group. E Elevation Group. Yeah. 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 So you sold the first business. Yeah, that's right. No, you. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, after magnetic sponsoring. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I had made all of this money in my 20s, and I didn't know what to do with it. I spent it on cars and houses and boats, and took a lot of trips and did a lot of fun things, but I was not investing any of it. Mm -hmm. I was just spending it. Mm -hmm. um, so around the age of 30, I realized that I was squandering a big opportunity, mm -hmm. and that I was making a lot of foolish decisions around money. Mm -hmm. And that was around 2008 when the market crashed here in the US. Mm -hmm. And perfect timing. Yes, it was. It was because nobody knew what to do anymore. No. And I needed to figure that out for myself. And I figured a lot of other people have the same questions that I do now. Of what do we do? So we set up uh, an interview platform yep. called the Elevation Group. And I would interview experts very much like this on how to invest mm -hmm. money. And uh, that did very well. It was a very successful mm -hmm. business. We did. $3.2 million in our first week. Um, with sales letters. Yeah, with one webinar. One webinar. And I uh, wrote the webinar. It took me about three months to write it. Wow. Put a lot of time and research into, into that webinar. Mm -hmm. We recorded it one time, and we used some software to essentially play it every day. Mm -hmm. And we released that to our audience in the world, and it was the right message at the right time. Yeah, it and was, that was perfect timing. Mm -hmm. Perfect timing yeah. for that. Yeah. For that time. Yeah. So that was a uh, that was a big a big uh, big success until it wasn't. And about a, a year and a half into it, unfortunately, we interviewed a gentleman who was not honest. Um, he ended up uh, giving us fraudulent documents and uh, pretending to be someone he wasn't. And he ended up uh, essentially taking a lot of my money that I invested with him and a lot of our customers' money that wow. invested with him. Mm -hmm. And that was a very big lesson learned and a very difficult, the biggest challenge I've ever gone through. To recommend some products. It's yeah, and to have them risky. betray that trust and, yeah. and, and do some very bad things with it was very, very difficult. And, uh, you know, they're in jail at this point, but it was, it was tough, yeah. Who was in jail? The guys who the guy? committed the fraud, wow. yeah. So maybe this is the reason why you are holding yourself back with this cryptocurrency market. Mm. I was waiting and waiting for, for you to announce what mm. you are doing. Are you into it? And then mm. you, didn't, you didn't do anything. You didn't say anything. I'm sure that was a big part of it. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, you never know what, what can happen with the financial mm. markets. And, and entrepreneurs are very, for the most part, comfortable with taking risk. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. And I realized that a lot of other average people are not, and they don't have the ability to recover mm -hmm. the way that we would and start a new business. So I actually got involved and bought my first Bitcoin in 2013 mm -hmm. uh, when it was about $70. And uh, that got stolen. And Mt. Gox, the big exchange back then, uh, got hacked, and, and I lost about $7 million worth of Bitcoin, at least today's money. Uh, but I've been in that world since then, so for five years now, and, and I talked about it publicly for the first time uh, probably six months ago, and mm -hmm. we, we made a course uh, for beginners, not on what to buy, mm -hmm. but educating them how that world works, how to set up an account, what wallets are used, and, and primarily how to participate in that industry mm -hmm. safely. Mm -hmm. How do you not get hacked? How do you protect the crypto assets that you end up buying? And uh, yeah, so that's been a, a really neat industry to participate in and mm -hmm. to follow. Yeah. What, what advice would you give now for the investments? Uh, I it? still think it's quite early. Mm -hmm. I still think there's a massive opportunity in that world, but you have to make sure that you take the right safety precautions and that you don't 
take uh, too big a risk. Mm -hmm. It is still a very risky industry. And so the way that I recommend if you want to get involved and mm -hmm. buy Bitcoin or Ethereum or anything like that is to only invest the money that you would put on the card table in Vegas. Mm -hmm. You're going to bet it gambling. at roulette gambling. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing here. And so that's what my friends and I do. We have a lot of fun placing our bets on different cryptos. Maybe it's just a couple hundred dollars. Maybe it's a thousand dollars. And that way, no matter what happens, if it tanks or goes to zero, it's okay. We had, we had fun and it's not something we need to worry about or get stressed about. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people who uh, see, you know, like it did last year with the prices going up that are buying it with credit cards, mortgaging their house, mm -hmm. making really right. bad decisions. Yeah. And uh, so that's just my big word of caution. I think everybody should be involved at some capacity but only in a way, again, if it goes to zero, you're like, ah, that was fun. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Which platform do you use? I like Binance a lot. Mm -hmm. Binance and Bittrex and mm -hmm. obviously Coinbase mm -hmm. uh, is nice as well. Mm -hmm. As I see, you started all businesses out from your own frustrations. Mm -hmm. Network marketing, magnetic sponsoring, then elevation group. Mm -hmm. Then uh, what about self-made men? Yes, yes. What was the, the mission of the, what is the mission of the self-made man? A self-made man was uh, an idea that I had when I was pursuing the hydroponic system. And I needed a way to stay in touch with my audience and deliver value to them every mm -hmm. week. And my audience is entrepreneurs and I'm working on a plant machine. So what do I do, right? And so I started Self-Made Man as a podcast, mm -hmm. and I was like, hey, I can interview someone great every week, deliver a lot of content, and it would be very little of my time to do that. So I started the podcast uh, in the beginning of 2015, mm -hmm. and the goal was to really provide mentorship to young men with ambition mm -hmm. who are wanting to become entrepreneurs and need to learn how it works. And um, it was my way to to mentor them and provide guidance. Uh, here in the United States over the last 15 years, we've seen a big shift in values mm -hmm. in this country, uh, and, and not in a good way, in a bad way. Um, there are not a lot of role models in Washington. Mm -hmm. There are not a lot of role models in, in sports these days. It's, uh, you know, lie, cheat, steal, and a lot of just bad stuff, right? So. Self-Made Man for me was an attempt to provide really good role models and mentors to that next generation of, of guys coming into this mm -hmm. space. And after I pulled the plug on the plant uh, system, uh, we had a lot of success and a big audience with Self-Made Man, so mm -hmm. I wanted to pursue that full time. Mm -hmm. And out of my frustration, um, my goal is to, has been to build a company that's not about me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was the face of Magnetic, the face of Elevation, mm -hmm. and I wanted to build a company that I could eventually turn into a brand and sell, which I'd never done yet. So that's my next challenge. Mm -hmm. And Self Made Man right now and what we've built is uh, a, a big part of that is, is that goal for me. And mm -hmm. So we interview people and create classes, and we have a big platform like YouTube. Mm -hmm. and. It's not about me other than the podcast, mm -hmm. and we're trying to build that into a big brand. We're launching an apparel line soon mm -hmm. and um, a couple of other things, and the goal is to turn that into a media company over the next two to three years and then hopefully have an exit from that. Mm -hmm. And if nothing more than to pursue that goal to learn from it mm -hmm. um, and just evolve as an entrepreneur myself in that way. Yeah, this is what I see also. Every interview I have, I grow. Mm, right. Yeah. After right. After the interview, I sit down. I have the whole list of questions. Mm. What did I learn? What are my next steps? How I will become better because of this interview? So, mm. uh, yeah, it's amazing how much you can learn and grow. The podcast talk. has been amazing. Amazing. Because yeah. you meet so many people. Yeah. You know, uh, people that you would never have a chance to no, meet otherwise. No. Yeah, like Tony Robbins and yeah. Damon John and, and just some amazing people. Uh, Gene Simmons from KISS was on the show. Mm -hmm. I was like, when would I ever meet Gene Simmons? Mm -hmm. And You do uh, it live in video like we are doing? Uh, also, just or? audio over audio. Skype. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I see many video material now. Those are the classes. Uh -huh, the yeah. classes. Okay. So the, the Self-Made Man podcast mm -hmm. is free. Mm 
-hmm. The membership is $19 a month. Mm -hmm. And people get access to all of the video classes mm -hmm. that we shoot here in Austin in different studios. Mm -hmm. Part of the, the challenge or thinking ahead in that business, what is the value of video going to be like? What is the experience of mm -hmm. media going to be like in five years? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be in VR? So all of the videos we shoot like this are in 360 VR as well. So. Uh, you know, in a couple of years, you'll be able to put your helmet on and, and sit in a chair right next to us as if you're in the studio oh, nice. and just looking around. Yeah, so, um, yeah. So you have your own studio right now? We rent different yeah, rent. locations around mm -hmm. Austin that I think are really neat settings visually mm -hmm. because I don't want 50 videos that all look the same. I think people get bored with that. Mm -hmm. So we'll go book a location for two days, and we'll shoot maybe two or three guests a day. Uh, and we've probably done that five, six, seven different locations. Mm -hmm. So it looks different, different more yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah visually. We, we are traveling around the world yeah. every time. Happens, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. So we can find more information on selfmademen.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's only $19 a month. $19 a month for everything. No, it's nothing. Yeah. So much wisdom. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your personal life a little mm. bit. You have a very young mm. baby right now. Eight-year-old son. Eight-year-old mm. son. He is a baby still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look my, at my daughter. She is also eight. Oh, awesome. <laughs> she, she's still a baby. Or maybe I want her to be <laughs> yeah, a baby. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, she is a girl already, but okay. So, you got uh, a son mm -hmm. eight years ago. Mm -hmm. How did this change everything that you do in the business? Hmm. How you live? work you know I have I, I, I split time with him and his mom mm -hmm. and so I have him three nights a week almost mm -hmm. half the week okay. and uh, yeah it's been it's been great and the older he gets the better it gets you know mm -hmm. we can do more together mm -hmm. he can come out on the boat now and um, hopefully in the next couple of years you know he'll get on the surfboard and we'll do that so mm -hmm. uh, yeah no it's been it's been really neat he's in um a small school here in Austin mm -hmm. that is 35 kids and a bunch of entrepreneurs parents all send their kids to the same school so Hal Elrod um, mm -hmm, yeah. and then Jay Papazon and mm -hmm. David Osborne and all of our kids are in the same little school and it's all different age groups so all blended and that mm -hmm. way you know Chase at eight gets to become a mentor to the new kids who start at seven and then he's got mentors of the kids who are older than him, and they all work together. And the entire curriculum is entrepreneurship. No way. And they don't have any books, uh, like traditional textbooks. They have plenty of books to read, but they're, they're storybooks, uh, you know, personal development books. Mm. And it's an amazing school. Um, it's a private school. A little private school. And it's called Acton, Acton, Acton. Academy. Oh, no. um, you brought that topic up. It's in the, uh, we you interviewed can, the founders on the podcast. I would like to interview them too. Yeah, amazing, amazing couple. It's in my notes. Mm. I think you can buy the franchise. Yes. Yeah, they, they have a, would they're you expanding recommend? that way. If you, uh, you know, if that's your passion and you want to run the school, the couple that, it's a, a married couple that runs the school that Chase goes to, and that's all they do. And they have three kids that are in the school as well, but that's what they do full time yeah, as their yeah, teachers. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for example, every month they get in groups of four and they figure out who's going to be the CEO, the CFO, the CMO. And they say, okay, what are we going to start? What kind of business? And the last one was Popsicles, right? Popsic uh, Popsico or whatever was the name of it. And I went and bought the domain for him and everything. And, uh, and they figure out what the ingredients are going to be. And they go to the grocery store with the parents and they buy the ingredients and they figure out what it costs to make, and that's how they learn math, is, okay, here's our cost of goods sold, and how many popsicles can we make? What did that cost? How much should we charge them? And they learn, you know, profit, and, and then they have to pay the teacher's tax. Uh, all of the reward system in the school is around uh, a, a little toy store that they have, and if you do good and you hit your goals, you get little money, and you, at the end of every Friday, you get to go buy a toy, and. You, you learn taxes on that way. Every, uh, every quarter they, 
have to elect a school president and they have to come up with a curriculum so they learn about politics and uh, leadership and things like that. So wow. it's super cool. I'm, yeah. I'm sold. Yeah. This, this is what I want, uh, wanted to ask you know, the, about the school system, mm -hmm. the traditional school system. Mm -hmm. I have a, a challenge with this. I don't know where to send my kids. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I just want them to, to learn something about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that this Acton, Acton, mm -hmm. Acton yeah. uh, school is uh, so much geared toward uh, entrepreneurship. Yeah, the whole thing is uh, Montessori style learning, meaning Montessori. it's all self paced. Like Waldorf? All yes. Yeah. But I, I sent my kids to the Waldorf school. Yeah, so very similar so learning style, self paced, yeah. but entrepreneurial curriculum. Oh my God. Yeah. Amazing. That's very neat. So you believe in entrepreneurship? Uh, more than ever, because I mm -hmm. think in 10, 15 years, when our kids are ready to make a living, you're going to have to, you know, I mean, I guess it's two options, go the corporate router or, or create your own opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I just think having that skill set and the biggest, here's the biggest thing that they've learned out of the school at seven, eight years old, mm -hmm. is they learn to look at the world through a problem solving viewpoint. So just at that age, they're already looking around, what can I do better? How can I fix that? How can I solve that problem? How can I come up with an idea? And for me, that's the single most important thing that's come from mm -hmm. it, is just the mindset to look at the world in that way, because then they can create all the opportunities they want. And, you know, the next step after that is, how do I solve a problem that I'm stuck with, right? If I don't know how to do something, how do I get help? And how do I pursue the answer and the solution? So to know that at eight, when I had to learn that at 1920 in network marketing, is a big shift, so. Or even later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And collaborating and mm -hmm. delegating and not, yeah. it's not only me, what I can do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is so important. What, what values would you like to pass down to your son? <clears throat> uh, you know, I mean, I think honesty and integrity are mm -hmm. the biggest mm -hmm. ones because, uh, um, I mean, that's the most important for long-term success, right? I think a lot of young entrepreneurs who are desperate to make some money will make some poor decisions to make that money now, and then it shoots them in the foot for their next venture. Uh, so I think that's one of the things that I've been fortunate to have learned a long time ago, which is why I've had, mm -hmm. I think, a pretty long career in this world. Um, so I think that's important. And the next one is, is, is just to look for problems that you can solve for other mm -hmm. people. I mm -hmm. think that's the next big, big piece that's the most important. Um, it might be your own problem. It might be somebody else's. But if, as long as you're looking for it, you'll find it and you'll see it. And Thank then you have you. an opportunity to, to create for yourself. So, yeah. How do you structure your day? Like how, how many hours per week do you work? Or? Very unstructured. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I became an entrepreneur because I didn't want a boss. So I don't like to even boss myself around. <laughs> um, so I wake up uh, with the sun, seven o'clock, mm -hmm. uh, have a quick bite to eat, jump on the computer. I have my little list of three to five tasks mm -hmm. I want to accomplish that day. And I basically just work uh, as much as I can until I get just too tired mentally mm -hmm. to, to get anything productive done. It's usually about three o'clock. Mm -hmm. And at that point I'll go usually work out, go to the gym, go for a bike ride mm -hmm. and do something physical. I try to eat 5.36 pretty early. Um, and, then, and then that's it. The rest of the day I'm either visiting friends or with Chase or relaxing or Maybe reading a book and in bed by ten o'clock. That's pretty bed. much it. Yeah. How many employees do you have? Or do you have a virtual team? Right now, very few. It's mm -hmm. virtual. I work from home. Mm -hmm. I have two customer service agents, mm -hmm. and everything else is outsourced. So mm -hmm. tech is outsourced, video is outsourced, social media is outsourced. Uh, I have nobody on a payroll as an employee at all. Wow. It's all outsourced, and that's it right now. Any reason for that? I had an office with Elevation Group. We mm -hmm. had an office with about 12 employees. And I work best 
when I'm by myself mm -hmm. with no distractions and I can think and I can write. Mm -hmm. Being in an office filled with people, I got very little done. Couldn't focus. I can relate. Mm. And I think it's the, just my personality type. You know, very much introverted and I like to just think and, and write. So, yeah, there's, uh, I think that's the primary reason. I didn't like having to go to an office every day even though it was mine. Um, yeah, so I think that's, that's primarily it. But that's a goal that I'm working on for, mm -hmm. for self-made is I need to find, if I want to turn it into a $50 million plus company, I need to find a great team and start building a team. Uh, so that'll be a goal here in the next year, probably, mm -hmm. and it'll probably be virtual. So what is the biggest challenge that you're facing right now in the business? Is this building a team or...? Um, yeah, it's how to... It's how to find... To build the team I need is, is going to be expensive. It's mm -hmm. going to be people who are making hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year salaries. I need probably three or four or five of, of those people. And that's just a big, that's a big gap. And we're too early still. Uh, we have a lot of growth that we can still do before we have to go down that, that okay. phase, that stage mm -hmm. yet. So it's coming, but probably mm -hmm. a, about a year from now. Mm -hmm. you, me you mentioned that you are introvert. Mm. I think there are many introverts out there. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to the introverts that want to start a business and they think they are not social, not outgoing, that this is not their thing. Well, that was my challenge in network marketing <laughs> yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. I was, you know, do what the system is, do what your mentor tells you to do, which was, again, talk to your friends and family members, invite people over to a party, go to events, and all things I didn't like to do, talk on the phone. And that's why I struggled with it for five years. Um, so my biggest piece of advice would be to understand who you are and how you're wired as soon as you can. If you're an introvert, don't fight that. Don't try to build a business that an extrovert is building and, and try to do it their way. Do it in a way that uh, you're aligned with and that works with how you're wired. And the moment, that's again, the moment I did that is when everything changed for me. So just accept it, don't fight it, mm -hmm. and then figure out how to win the game that you're playing the way that you're you're designed to do it. Is this the reason why we don't see you at live events? Yeah. You don't have live events? No, I'm doing my first, my first group coaching mm -hmm. with a, maybe 20 people mm -hmm. uh, for the first time in 11 years, in, in a couple of months. Uh -huh. um, and I'll do live events. I'll go speak on stage only mm -hmm. in this Q&A, though. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't, uh, if I'm going to do a dedicated presentation, I'll spend two months working on it, uh -huh. and it's not worth my time to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, but that's probably, I think, my energy is best put into activities. I like to focus on activities and work on things in my business that I can do one time mm -hmm. that will then produce a return for the next two to three, four years. Yeah. And that's the only things I like to do. That's why I'm not on social media a lot. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Very little. <clears throat> maybe in one Instagram post every two mm -hmm. weeks mm -hmm. because I feel that um, if your story disappears in 24 hours, it's not a good investment. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we're thinking about starting a YouTube channel and, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about doing some videos uh, because at least with YouTube, I can create those and people will watch them for yeah. years. Yeah. Um, so that's a big piece of the puzzle too, especially if you're by yourself, you're starting out, is put your time and activities into pieces that will, once you're done, will continue to bring on and it can be a foundation that you can then work on the next level and then the next level. So with our products like Listgrow, I made that webinar one time for Listgrow three years ago and we sold $5 million of that course last year from that one webinar. Right, so I spent six weeks writing it and recording it, editing it, but that then has been sold every single day for three years now. And then I can work on the next piece, and then I can work on the next piece. And so uh, that's a big, I think, consideration people need to keep in mind. How do you come up with the ideas uh, of creating courses like List Grow? List Grow was, uh, I wrote that when I was designing the hydroponic system. And that was one of the main ways that I funded the development of that was, was to sell that course. And my goal was to retire from 
internet marketing and to pursue that. So I said if I had to make one more course, what is the most important skill set that I could teach a new internet entrepreneur? And it was how to build an email list. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been by far and away the single most valuable asset that I've ever built during my career, mm -hmm. and it still is. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was the inspiration for that course, is if this is going to be my last one, what's it going to mm -hmm. be about? And that was the topic. Um, some of them are based on asking my audience what they need help with. Mm -hmm. What do you guys need help with most, A, B, or C? Mm -hmm. And they'll vote, and that's what we'll focus on. Um, yeah, so that's typically how I, mm -hmm. I come up with those, with the ideas for what I'm going to. If I write a course like List Grow, it'll take me six months to create. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of work, mm -hmm. a lot of work. Uh, the cryptocurrency course is probably three months. And that's all I'm doing when I'm, when I'm doing that. So it needs to, it needs to uh, have an audience that mm -hmm. has that problem. So, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, list Grow. What is the best advice to somebody that wants to grow a list? Uh, I think the first thing is knowing that that is a really important piece to this puzzle. Uh, my email list is its the most valuable thing I have because once you have an audience and a list, everything you do is going to be successful at that point. Uh, launch a new product, you're going to sell it. Start a podcast, you're going to get an audience, uh, you know, everything. So. The difference that I think people get lost on right now is, well, should I build an email list or should I build social media, yeah. Instagram channel? And my answer is still an email list for two mm -hmm. primary reasons. The first is that you don't own your social media account. You don't own your Instagram account or YouTube or Facebook or anything. Mm -hmm. Those companies own that account and mm -hmm. they can pull it from you anytime they want. We saw a bunch of YouTubers over the last year, PewDiePie and all of these other people, just get their accounts taken away, demonetized. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you're building an asset for another company like Google or Facebook. It's not your asset. Mm -hmm. So I think that's silly. I think that's not a good decision. I think it's very risky. And the second reason is you are at the mercy of their algorithm. So if you have a Facebook fan page, four or five years ago, everybody wanted likes, right? A million likes on your fan page. You make a post now, how many see it? Six, five percent. Maybe, maybe, if you're lucky. I get maybe one percent. Yes. And, you know, I've got people with five million likes and they get okay. 5,000 views. Who cares, right? So uh, you have no control again. It's not your asset. And same with Instagram. I don't want to build up an asset for another company that I don't own mm -hmm. that people are not going to then see. So with email, I own it. It's my data. It's my email list. It's my database. I can move it to another email service mm -hmm. provider anytime I want. Nobody can take it away from me. Mm -hmm. And 100% of those people are going to get my email. Mm -hmm. They might not read it, but it's going to get delivered because there's no, there's no algorithm to filter it out. So for those reasons, I think email is more important than ever. Uh, and the final, the final reason is that it still converts from a, a sales perspective better than mm -hmm. anything else in social media by far. You know, a good example is last year I promoted a financial newsletter run by a friend of mine on, on the crypto space. Mm -hmm. He's a former hedge fund manager, very smart dude. He produces research on different crypto assets you can invest in or buy. And... I was a customer of the product, I loved it, and I said, hey guys, if you're into crypto, I would go recommend buying this guy's newsletter. It wasn't cheap, it's like $2,000 a year. And I sent four emails to our audience about that newsletter, just recommending it, and we sold $1.3 million of that newsletter, which for us was a th almost $600,000 commission in a week. And that's just wow. the power of an email. But could I have done that if I got on social media and made a post about it? No. It's not going to happen. Uh, there's not enough time in, in an image or a 15-second mm -hmm. story to make your case on it. Maybe YouTube video could have done well, um, but that's it. So, yeah, email list is, is it. And if you want to build it, the best way to build an email list quickly 
is to buy attention. This is all about attention, right? Before I can get your email address, I've got to get your attention and make the case that I have something valuable to offer you. And um, there's two ways to get attention. You can dance for it on social media, <laughs> right? Um, you know, I call it the dancing bear. You can perform every day for the algorithm to get attention, uh, or you can buy it. And you can act like a real business and you can spend money on advertising and marketing. And which one is, again, more sustainable over time? Which one provides you with the most leverage? And it's, it's buying advertising instead of performing, right? So uh, we buy a lot of advertising. And the biggest thing about advertising is how do we make our money back? Because it's expensive. Advertising. Yeah. You work with Jason. Facebook, Instagram. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if I spend a dollar on advertising, especially if you're brand new, you want to make that dollar back or you go broke. So the big part about building a list is you want to buy attention, you want to spend money on advertising, and you want to make that money back the same day, ideally. Mm -hmm. So if we spend $1,000 a day, uh, you know, we'll shoot to make at least $1,000, $3,000 back that day. And in order to do that, you've got to know how to sell. So once people give you their email address, give them some free content, teach them for an hour on a webinar, and then offer them an advanced training that'll solve all of their problems and teach them what they need to know, and make your money back from your ad costs. And if you can do that, you know, uh, you win, because now you can get 1,000 emails a day. Um, but the key to, to doing that successfully comes down to copywriting. Mm -hmm. How do you write and create a sales message that will take a stranger who just found your website and an hour, hour and a half later, turn them into someone who's willing to give you their credit card information? And that's the skill of copywriting. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, a really critical piece of this puzzle that uh, it's going to be very difficult to build a business without that mm -hmm. skill set. Yeah. Thank you. I have maybe a personal question, but mm. I think that all other uh, people watching this can benefit. Mm. Uh, I started this show or whatever, mm. or podcast and YouTube, just because I wanted to connect with mm -hmm. uh, successful people. I wanted to learn. I didn't have anything in my mind uh, how I will monetize mm -hmm. it. And now I see we are getting a lot of traction. Mm. So what advice would you give me or maybe somebody else that is considering starting a podcast, YouTube channel? How should we, how can I monetize this traction right now and the attention that we are getting? Uh, I think the, the most important consideration you need to make if you're going to start a channel like this or podcast is don't do it unless you're willing to commit to producing a show every week for three years. Mm. Don't do it uh, because that's the time it takes to really build momentum mm -hmm. and to build a relationship with a lot of people. If you come in and you make five shows, six shows, and you expect to get some kind of attraction from that, it's not going to happen. So when I started the podcast, my friend Lewis Howes, uh, mm -hmm. I called him and I said, hey, give me some tips. And that was the tip that he gave me was don't start unless you're in it for three years. And you can commit to that. So that's rule number one. Uh, mm -hmm. Rule number two, when it comes to monetization, the ability to monetize your audience is directly proportional to the quality of the relationship that you have with that audience. And if the quality is there, if the rapport is not there, if the trust is not there, they're not going to buy from you. Mm -hmm. So that's piece number one is just be willing to give, be willing to give, mm -hmm. put in the equity, put in the energy over a long period of time. And if you build that relationship and that trust level, then the opportunity to monetize it becomes really easy. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it's simply a matter of trust. Uh, and if you make a recommendation to buy a product, they're going to go buy the product because they trust you. Mm -hmm. So for me, monetization is all about, all about trust, uh, trust and time. And, you know, I, I wouldn't start a podcast or a YouTube channel for ad revenue. We don't do any advertising on our show because it's not worth it. Uh, we're not a really big show. We get 125,000 downloads a month. It's not, it's not huge. It's okay. It's medium. Uh, and we've never had an ad because if I were to sell advertising on that, I might make $1,000, $1,500 a month from that, maybe 2,000 tops, which to me is not worth it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to put my audience and my listeners through an ad for two grand. No. Um, but if I get on the show and I say, hey, go buy this guy's product if you have this problem, we'll sell a lot. We'll make a lot of money that way. 
So that to me is, is what the monetization strategy is when it comes to an audience or a channel. Until you get to millions and millions of, of visitors a month or downloads a month, then you can make real money, twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 a month, good. But until you're there, I wouldn't worry about it. I would do it for a different reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, great advice. Um, any productivity tip, hacks that you, you have or apps that you're using? Hmm. I just use Evernote. Evernote. Okay. Evernote for everything. We, come, we all come across resources all the time. Mm -hmm. Articles, tools, tips. I, if I'm on Twitter and I see a good article with some suggestions mm -hmm. or a piece of software, I'll email it to myself, get home, and I'll put it in Evernote. And different categories, marketing, mm -hmm. lead generation, mm -hmm. social media. Mm -hmm. And that's been really valuable because mm -hmm. you never know when you're going to need a year from now that tool and resource. Yeah. Uh, big piece. So I used Evernote, but then I then yeah. I quit. I don't know why. <laughs> that's it. That's where yeah. I put my five daily tasks every day. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, so Evernote is is kind of my world. It's the only tool that I use uh, for the most part. You know, apps. I don't have any. I don't have any. Mm. Yeah, not that I can think of. What, what about health and energy? Mm. How do you sustain your energy or any special? food that yeah. you like to eat or I try to eat I try to eat paleo or uh, paleo. just you know low sugar mm -hmm, mm -hmm. low sugar a lot of veggies um, I uh, <laughs> interesting story but uh, three months ago I had an accident and and hit my head and I haven't slept for three months so I haven't been able to fall asleep one time in three months um, so I probably don't look very good right now, <laughs> um, unless I have you know something like an Ambien or something like that. Uh, Racing cars or it was uh, it was in Colorado and and just hiking mm -hmm. um, and just the weirdest thing. Next day couldn't sleep, and so that's been. Don't take it for granted. That's been really hard um, to to handle that. Mm -hmm. I have it managed, but from an energy level wise, that's been tough. So. Uh, for me, it's lower stress as much as you can. Do a lot of meditation now. Uh, there's a great headset called Muse. Muse. You put a M U S E. Mm -hmm. You put it on your head. It measures your brain waves, mm. and it has an app that will give you feedback and audio. So you put in your headphones, and if you're in a meditative state, you'll start to hear birds chirping. If you're not, you'll start to hear thunder or waves crash, and you get this auditory feedback. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it allows you to actually figure out when you're truly meditating and when you're not, and that's been super valuable to help me go through what I've been going through. Um, so for maybe $100, $200, that's, meditation's been great uh, for that. So what else? So you meditate every day? I try to at night, night. Uh, to try to relax uh, at night, um, and still mm -hmm. trying to trying to figure out how to go to sleep again. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's been uh, that's been a very important tool. Uh, gosh, what else? Exercising, gym. Yeah, Exercising. yeah, gym or gym or bike, whatever mm -hmm. you want to do, whatever you have fun. Uh, you know, especially as you get older. I'm 40 now. I can't do what I used to do. Like we used to go out and wine every night and fun, <laughs> and it just can't do it anymore. Uh, the price to be paid the next day is too, too big. big. Yeah. What about racing cars? You're a fan, like Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's my biggest passion is racing yeah. cars, and for me, that's goes away just out of your head because you're going 150 miles an hour. There's nothing else you can think about, and well, it's, we're very lucky here in Austin. We have the Circuit of the Americas, which is the big F1 track mm -hmm. uh, here in our backyard. So that's been phenomenal to have. Um, yeah, I love the sport. I love the fact that the decisions that I make while driving have consequences. I love that they matter. If I make a mistake, it's either going to be very expensive to fix or I, I could possibly get hurt. And hopefully not, but uh, I like the fact that it matters. Every, every single decision I make matters, or if I miss a basketball hoop, who cares? doesn't matter. If I miss a turn, run into another car, it matters. Um, so that's 
I don't know why, but that's my... What about surfing waves? <laughs> yeah, so here in Austin, the biggest thing you can do during the summertime, because it gets really hot, is to spend time on the lake, on Lake Austin, or on the water. And it's uh, having, a, having a ski boat out there has been great for Chase and spending time with him and for uh, just building relationships with other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to use it too in a lot of our, our media and building the lifestyle of self-made man and things mm -hmm. like that. So if you can find ways to turn your hobbies into something you can em employ in your business and a business expense and write it off, really good thing to do. So the, uh, the self-made man race car, we have wrapped. The boat, we have wrapped. Yeah, awesome. We can write that off from a tax perspective and hopefully make money with it, you know, from marketing. Uh, and yeah, so the big sport here is wake surfing. So the boat, big five foot wave off the back, you get a surfboard and you just surf. And it's been fun because wakeboarding, much faster, 25 miles an hour hurts a lot. Wake surfing, 10 miles an hour, no big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, what else? What else about it? But it's been good. The big, yeah. the big thing is is find a way to incorporate your hobby into your business, and so you can essentially get paid to do what you have, have fun Gr with. Great idea. Yeah. yeah. I have one last question, mm. which is uh, I call it the the power message. Mm. Just pretend that you only have five seconds to live. Mm. What what message would you send wow, five to Chase? Seconds to live. Wow. What message, like last message, would you send to your Chase son, uh, or something that would stick with him till the rest of his life, inspire him? Hmm. Um, you know, the biggest. Uh, it would be the biggest challenge that I've had, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, it's probably don't be so hard on yourself. Mm. Um, I think as entrepreneurs, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to achieve, and um, you know, I know I'm I'm pretty hard on myself about mistakes that I make or you know things that go on. And I think it just as I've gotten older, I realize it just doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, and so, just have fun, enjoy it. You don't have to build a hundred million dollar business to be happy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that would be it. Mm -hmm. How can I or my audience help you to spread out your message? Oh gosh, um, selfmademan.com is yeah, yeah that's our primary gig. Anything else? No, that's uh, that's our main focus. That's all we work mm -hmm. on these days. So, uh, yeah, this was awesome. Thank okay. you for having Thank me. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, it was absolutely. nice to talk with you. Likewise. So, my guys, have fun. Don't be hard on yourself and. Enjoy watching these shows. I will come back later in another show, so see you soon.